Hello guys, welcome back to my channel Gamma Diagama. So in this video, what I'm going to do is actually going to I'm going to introduce the polygamma function and then use it in a, a nice formula for the diagamma function. So with that being said, let's get started. Okay, so uh, the polygamma function, and I'm going to define it now. It's this symbol psi sub n of z. So it's polygamma of order n with an argument of z is defined as the n plus one -th derivative with respect to uh, the argument z of natural log of gamma of z now we can do a slight modification or quick evaluation so if we take out one derivative from this n plus one -th derivative and we take it inside to act on the natural log of gamma of z this guy just turns out to be the digamma function so the polygamma of order n is actually the nth derivative of the digamma function isn't that isn't that like a really really nice thing and you know what if if you say put uh, n is zero in, in this formula or, or you know this formula you'll end up with just the digamma function so another interesting thing to note is polygamma of order zero is actually the digamma function i mean you could write a digamma with this sub subscript of zero to denote that it's a polygamma of order zero but you know these are like the basic evident things what I'm going to do is use this formula that we had here and then I'm going to use the series definition of the digamma function and believe me I made a video uh, finding the series representations of uh, the gamma function and the digamma function so please check that video out if you haven't already so then this is going to be nth derivative with respect to z of minus Euler Mascheroni minus 1 over z plus sum from k equals 1 to infinity of 1 over k minus 1 over k plus z this guy inside is the series representation of digamma now what I'm going to do is this uh, Euler mass crony is a constant you know differentiating a constant even once will give zero n times will definitely be zero so this guy will go to zero and then this guy negative one over z if you differentiate this guy once so if you differentiate this guy once what you get is uh, one over z squared and then when you differentiate 1 over z squared you get negative negative 2 divided by z cubed and then again following this pattern we'll have 2 times 3 over z to the 4 so if you notice the general pattern that's going on here or you can just use a, a, the power rule for derivatives the pattern you'll get is minus 1 to the n plus 1 because for the first derivative we did not have the negative right so when n is 1 we'll have a even power making this 1 and n factorial because every time we are, we are basically compounding these guys we are like multiplying 2 then 3 and then in the next turn we'll have a 4 also on top 
डिवाइडेड बाय z टू द n प्लस वन यू कैन अगेन वेरीफाई दैट हियर ओके एंड देन वन ओवर k नाउ डज नॉट डिपेंड ऑन z सो दैट विल गो टू जीरो एंड वी हैव द एंथ डेरेवेटिव ऑफ दिस गाय सो माइनस एंथ डेरेवेटिव विद रिस्पेक्ट टू z ऑफ सम फ्रॉम k इक्वल्स वन टू इन्फिनिटी ऑफ वन ओवर k प्लस z so the the thing with this guy as well is going to be like the first term over here we're going to have sum from k equals 1 to infinity we'll have minus 1 to the n plus 1 n factorial divided by not z but z plus k because there was a z plus k here to the n plus 1th power Now notice that when k is zero, you just get this guy. So, which means uh, we can club these guys and make the sum start from k equals zero. So we have minus one to the n plus one, n factorial divided by z plus k to the n plus one. That, my friends, is. the polygamma of order n with argument z that's that's a pretty pretty nice formula and now just for fun because one seems to be the 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 most basic argument you can have let's calculate polygamma of order n evaluated at 1 so we have sum from k equals 0 to infinity Minus one to the n plus one n factorial divided by um, k plus one to the n plus one. Now we can re-index slightly. We can make the sum start from one to infinity. We'll have minus one to the n plus one. N factorial can be expressed as gamma of n plus one. Divided by, since we re-index this, k plus one will just be a k to the n plus one. So we we can write this as sum from k equals one to infinity of minus one to the n plus one, gamma of n plus one, and then this guy is Riemann zeta of n plus one because notice this guy is sum from k equals one to infinity of one over k to the n plus one, which By the definition of Riemann zeta of, is Riemann zeta of n plus one, and you know what? If if you wanted to generalize this slightly with a special function, this thing would actually be sum from k equals zero to infinity of minus one to the n plus one gamma of n plus one, and then we we will have Hurwitz zeta of n plus one, comma z plus k. So Hurwitz zeta is sum from k equals zero to infinity of one over uh, z plus k to the s. That is the Hurwitz zeta function of s evaluated at uh, z plus k. you know i'll i'll actually want to make a slight correction here hurwitz zeta is actually defined as well this guy sum from k equals 0 to infinity of 1 over z plus k to the s is hurwitz zeta of s comma this argument that's you know different from the the variable of summation so z in this case it's z again so that was the correction not not z plus k but z because k is being summed so it's like it's it's not static that's why so you know you can you also use this formula if you want to represent everything in terms of special functions and i know some people who just enjoy you know tracing out this zeta many can't but those who can just try to flaunt it okay so now with with having obtained a nice expression for uh, 
this is the polygam of order n evaluated to one and having introduced the polygamma function formally let's see what its possible applications are on the next page see you there okay so now i'm going to use the idea of taylor series so any function that's differentiable and continuous f of x say can be expressed as a sum from n equal 0 to infinity of x minus a to the n uh, the nth derivative of f if at a divided by n factorial and uh, you may wonder what the significance of this a is well this is the taylor series of f of x centered at x equals a so if and uh, mostly in, in most cases it is if uh, the taylor series is of a function is centered at zero then it becomes just a special case or a maclaurin series but you know i'm sure you know this and this this bracketed power is actually the nth derivative of f of x evaluated at x equals a okay so now i, I want to find the, the, this taylor series form for the diagram of x plus 1 at x equals 1 so which means the diagram of x plus 1 can you know be expressed using this definition sum from n equals 0 to infinity x plus 1 minus a a in this case is 1 to the n nth derivative of diagram evaluated 1 divided by n factorial this will simplify to sum from n equals 0 to infinity x to the n nth derivative of diagram of 1 and n factorial okay you know what, what we can do at this point is write out the first term so when n equals 0 x to the 0 is 1 0 factorial is 1 so we'll have the 0 derivative of the diagram which is the diagram itself at 1 plus the remaining sum from n equals 1 to infinity x to the n nth derivative of di gamma divided by nth factorial now the di gamma of 1 and i've made a video on this is negative euler mascheroni constant keep everything else the same and now the nth derivative of the di gamma function which we defined just few moments ago to be the the polygamma function so, so this will be minus Euler mascheroni plus sum from n equals 1 to infinity x to the n polygamma of order n evaluated at 1 divided by n factorial and humor me but we've just found a series uh, representation of the, the polygamma of order n at 1 so that will now just be x to the n minus 1 to the n plus 1 gamma of n plus 1 Riemann zeta of n plus 1 divided by n factorial and one interesting thing is you can write the n factorial in the denominator in in a very very special form you can write it in terms of a gamma function so the gamma of n plus 1 lo and behold the gammas cancel out we are just left with negative Euler mass Roni bus plus sum from n equals 1 to infinity x to the n minus 1 to the n plus 1 times Riemann zeta of n plus 1 and that precisely my friends is the Taylor series for a diagram of x plus 1 at x equals 1 it's a really really nice result because if you want to just expand this out for one we'll have uh, x diagamma uh, sorry Riemann zeta of 2 minus x squared 
Riemann zeta of 3 plus x cubed Riemann zeta of 4 and this process is going on to infinity so it's like the Riemann zetas are also changing values it's like a, a sum a summed zeta function that's basically going on here I mean I'll just say at this point to end the video that this this formula isn't that common when it uh, comes to solving problems we use this other definition uh, you know the, the classic definition that you obtain from the Weierstrass definition of the gamma function you know if you want to say write a infinite sum for this Euler uh, di gamma function but in any case if you you know encounter if you if you want to evaluate like an infinite series which has these varying summed zeta functions over here whose arguments are basically the the variables of summation that's when you you can probably want to you know convert this in, in such a form that you write it as a di gamma function so in that case this is very important so i think that's it for this video guys let's end it here so before going, please don't forget to write, like, share, and subscribe to my channel, guys. Recommend me to your friends. Spread the word of Gamma Diagram in the math community. And in the meantime, stay home, stay safe, keep doing math. Stay tuned uh, for more content on this channel. There's going to be great stuff. You know, content isn't a problem, nor is consistency. But please stay tuned for that, though. And in the meantime, peace out. Signing off.